السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم أيها الطلاب الكرام In this video, we're going to learn a little bit about the parts of speech in the Arabic language. And what I mean by parts of speech is what are the parts of words that we need to bring in to make a proper sentence in the Arabic language. Now, as you're learning about Arabic, or you might have gone uh, to different videos and different places and learned that I can learn how to speak in metaphors, I can learn syntax, I can learn morphology, there's a lot. We're not going to be studying in depth a lot of these grammar rules. We will take grammar rules, we're going to take them, but we're not going to sit there and try to identify each and every part with our sentences. But I do want you to know that we're going to be focused on our Arabic course book here, the Medina Islamic University one, and we're going to go through that one, and by the will of Allah, if we're able to finish it, we're going to do part two and part three. Some things that I want to start you off with, when you say, what is a sentence made up of in the Arabic language? We're going to look at speech. And the Arabic word for speech, and remember, I would like for you guys to write down everything I write down. And I want you to start writing, even though my penmanship is not the best, but I want you to try to write how I'm writing so you get that practice. So take your notepads out, take your pens, and let's get started. We're going to write Al-Kalam. Start from the top, and you're just going to draw it. See how you kind of go like that, and you write that calf? And by the way, there are many people who write better than I do. There's videos out there that you can go look at and do, but you can kind of uh, do both at the same time while you're learning Arabic. Al-Kalam, up again, down, and the meme, like that. It means speech. Speech has to be coherent. It can't just be a mixture of words that have no meaning. So, what do we have to have in a sentence? Very commonly, you'll have Alism. The noun. And these nouns, they have a lot of different things that go into them. Of course, you know it's a person, it's a place, it's a thing. But what about when I say hada? That's not a person, place, or thing. That's a special pronoun there. That also comes under here. So anything that's a noun, a name, a pronoun, it's going to come over here. How do you identify what is a noun if you don't even know the meaning of the word? So let's take a word that you probably know or you don't know. How about qalam? If I was to see this word and I didn't know its meaning, how would I know if that's a noun or a verb? Which is going to be the second part. Let's see, you can look at the harakat. And there's one specific harakah on here that is the giveaway. It's the tenween at the end. Nouns can accept tenween at the end. Whereas verbs, fi'l or af'al, they cannot. Another thing that you can use to identify a noun is the addition. Where'd my eraser go? It's around here somewhere. Don't worry. You'll just see it get thrown to me. And uh, there's a person doing that. There's no magic. It's not sihr. Sihr is haram, as you know. There you go. Thanks. When you do an addition of elef and lamb, this is another key or another clue to tell you, or a sign, to tell you this is a noun. Can you say Al-Qalamun? Whenever you add Al, you cannot have Tanween anymore because this means the, and whenever you have Tanween at the end, it means a. So you can't say the a pen. It's either going to be the pen or a pen, okay? That's what these things signify. So 
you have to leave it as just the one there. Al-Qalamu. There's a lot more here, but we're going to keep it light and keep it simple. Al-Af'al. The verbs. Now remember, if I get rid of Al, it's just going to be Af'al. If I get rid of Al here, it's just going to be Ismun. Alright? What's an Ism? Or what's a Fi'l? Fi'l or Af'al, they split up into past, present, and request or command. It's not how we usually do it in English language where they say past and present and future. There is a future, but it's going to take on the same form as the present. So, when we take af'al, we have fi'lun ma'dhin, right? And with this word, this used to confuse me when I was in school. I was like, why do they write sometimes ma'dhin, and why do they write ma'dhi sometimes? And once we get into it, we'll explain uh, why that is. Once we're starting in class, you'll learn that whenever it's attached to something else, that yet will show up when it's not attached. It'll be like this, with, without anything. So here you have <clears throat> the next one, mudari'. So you have past, present, and then finally, amr. Okay, a command. All right. A command or request, because this comes into when you make dua, right? You don't say, I'm commanding Allah to do, you know, have mercy on me or forgive me. Like when you say, Allahumma ighfir li. That word, ighfir, it's saying, forgive me. You're commanding Allah, you're requesting. You're requesting. So that's why we use that terminology. And that's the one for af'al. What do they look like? You have something like this. This is a very common thing where the harakat will be in this three letter. The letters will be three letters and it'll be fatha, uh, fatha, fatha in that form. They do change where it might be fatha, kasra, fatha, or fatha, dhamma, fatha. They vary. But again, don't get overwhelmed. Just learn okay, there's past tense, there's present tense. And there's request or command. When mudari' comes in, it has the same letters, but we add a ya' in there. We add a ya' in there. See, here's the dal, the ha, and the ba. The same letters are there, but we have to add this ya' in there to make it into present and the harakat change. And here, the same letters exist, but we have to add a hamzat wasl like that, and it says idhab. Idhab, which means go. So, dhaba, he went, yadhabu, he is going, idhab, you're telling that person, go. So, that's the changes that you'll see in uh, the af'al, the verbs. And that's the subject. There's more to it, there's a lot more to it, but this is all you need to know for now, and that's what they call sarf, the, the study of sarf or morphology whenever you're changing from one form to another form. And lastly, we have a harf. Harfun. And just quickly, let's see if you guys remember that rule. Can I say al af'alun right now? Because I put Tanween here. Why did I put Tanween there? Because there's no Elif and Lam. So, over here there's Elif and Lam. Can I put Tanween? Answer is no. Over here there's Elif and Lam. Can I put Tanween? <coughs> Excuse me. The answer is also no. Harfun. Right? What if I did this? Then that means this has to go. Al-harfu. Now remember, 
Just because I wrote al harfu, if I got rid of al and just wrote harfun, it's good. If I got, it's okay. If I got rid of al and wrote af'al, you know, it's okay. This just means the verbs or simply verbs. And we have a lesson dedicated to al and tanween in the next or in the next couple of videos, inshallah, it'll come up. The harf are going to be words that are not verbs and they are not nouns. So, in English, I believe they'll be called prepositions, but again, you'll be like, oh, what's a preposition? So if you say things like on or below or in front or you say things like in, at, they'll technically be prepositions, but the huruf in Arabic language, they'll be described as not a verb, not a noun. Okay? So you have min, which means from. That's not a verb, that's not a noun. You see it ends with sukun. You see it has no alif and lam. You see it doesn't follow this scale. That's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? That is a harf. And then you have ila. which means two. Again, ends with this alif, alif at the end will have a sukun unless there's a, a, a clear uh, fathatain. But if it ends like that, it, that's an alif, it has a sukun. So you see here, no alif and lam, no tenween. It doesn't follow these scales, right? So that means it's a harf. Your, sala your, your sentences, your speech, your kalam will have to have these things. Not all three of them, but it will have to be made up of these you know, parts of speech in order for you to have a coherent sentence. Okay? Now, again, when we study the Arabic course book, you have to accept the fact that you're studying a brand new language and just because um, you're studying the language, it doesn't mean that you have to study so much grammar rules, but you do need to learn a little bit of grammar rules because you may love the Arabic language and you always keep hearing me say that. You love the Arabic language, but grammar is too difficult and that's usually what makes people stop learning, I think. So just take it light and take it simple. We'll take a little bit of grammar, but I want you to focus on building your vocabulary, using your speech, using the words you know, um, even at home, you might find yourself teaching somebody. You know, you're talking to your brother or your sister, and we'll learn the word as to how do you say, give me, you know, hati. You say, hat, we already learned this means qalam. So you tell your sibling, hat, hat al qalam, give me the pen. Or you say, give me al qalam. However you can use your word to learn the language, use whatever you know. You know, if you just know, give me, use give me. If you just know pen, use pen. Because when you're studying a language, normally what you have to do is immerse yourself. If you immerse yourself around people who speak Arabic here and they're always speaking Arabic, guess what? You'll learn Arabic. You'll learn the colloquial Arabic where it's more in the street you know, the street language, the simpler one, but you'll still learn it. And you can learn that in America, or you can learn that wherever you find Arabs speaking. Very simple. Or if you say, no, I want to use the, I want to learn the classical Arabic. Well, that's going to require you to stay around people who speak classical Arabic, or you sit in front of class, in front of a teacher, and you take these words and you practice them, and you study them, and then you have to keep throwing these words out because the more senses you use while you learn will help you retain those things. You know, I was, uh, I practice with my son sometimes speaking Arabic. And when I practice with him, you know, he grew up here in America, he was born in America, and English, he caught on to it very fast. And he understands Arabic better than he speaks it. So I said, okay, let's practice some speaking. So he'll come and say, I want to play outside. And then we'll say, okay, well, how do you say outside? I want to go out. And he'll say, uh, I want to go out. 
We say, okay, how do you say play? Al'ab. So I say, okay, let's put those two together. So he goes, he'll use the Arabic version of the word uridu, which means I want. I mean, not Arabic, the Yemeni one, the dialect. Which means you say, ashti means uh, I desire. Ashti, it's actually ashtehi. Anyways, he says, I want akhruj al'ab. And I said, okay, great, let's go play. So kids, they are using everything they want. Like that's something they want. He's using his hands, he's talking, he's listening, he's looking at me. Use your senses and don't be afraid to make mistakes. And make sure, make sure that you're taking notes and you don't get, become stagnant. Don't just research your stuff and put it there and then you take a two, three week break. Keep building off and that's why we try to make these videos short. So you can come in, get your 12 minutes, get your 15 minutes and you know, move on that week. All right, until next time, barakallahu fikum wa ila liqa. Make sure you always make the dua. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana. I'll see you all at the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.